So if you're looking at attracting clients to work with you, rather than you go chasing around people, your portfolio is one of the most essential items online. So people can see the quality of work you do, who you've done it for, uh, and your general style that they can expect from you if they choose to work with you. So why a portfolio so hard? Why is it so difficult to work out what work to put in it, what work to leave out of it? And also, what should you show in terms of case studies? Should you show just images? Should you go into real detail? There's a lot to consider. So what I'm gonna do is show you a portfolio I found that I think is, uh, does a fantastic job of showing off this company's work. Uh, and I know they get a lot of work from this portfolio. So let's delve in, see what they do well, and what you can apply to your portfolio. So this is Farm Design, and the website is farmdesign.net. And straight away you can see the quality uh, of the mock-ups of the work. If you're a potential client, coming into this, you can see that they, uh, these guys really know how to design, really know how uh, to put packaging together, uh, and it's incredibly professional straight away. The other thing you can see is that, um, apart from a few different projects, this is predominantly aimed at the kind of uh, food, packaging, and restaurant market. Um, so they show that kind of work straight off. Uh, then they've got quite a, a strong title underneath, and I always recommend you do this, like a, like a positioning statement. Uh, and it says, at Farm Design, we cultivate brands. We are a tribe of thinkers and creatives that roll up our sleeves to help brands grow through thoughtful strategy, collaborative insights, and quite frankly, hard work. What I get from that is that it's um, straight to the point. You can tell that they are all about helping companies grow. They're all about branding. Um, what they don't mention in there, uh, which I think they have done before, is that they are pretty much focused on the food and kind of restaurant market. Maybe they've gone a bit beyond that now. But again, if you're in that market and you scroll down, you can see the phenomenal packaging design. You've got yogurts here, you've got the ice cream there. Um, you've got, um, again, tea here. So it's all very food, drink orientated. The, um, the mock-ups are incredible. I know that some are um, uh, kind of photoshopped 3D models. Some are literally um, taken from the place from the restaurant, wherever it is. Um, just really, really, really good visuals. And what we'll do now is just go into one of them as an example. So again, great way to start, kind of bunch up those projects so you can click and go further in, which is exactly what um, a potential client would do. Again, for a particular project, what you wanna do is have a large image at the top, showing off the brand as strong as possible. Um, what they've done down the side here, I think is very important, is a list of services. So again, you always want to be thinking, what does a potential client um, look for and think while they're on my portfolio? Well, they want to know the range of capabilities you've got and how focused you are. So for this project, it says they did research and strategy, uh, which again elevates them to a certain level. They did the branding, packaging, web design, and print design. Uh, another really nice idea is here, they've got the, the project was featured on a site called The Die Line. Uh, the Die Line is a, a phenomenal blog for packaging design. So very quickly, we'll have a brief look at this. Um, you know, if you get your projects featured on a site like this, then you definitely want to link out to it from the project. So what services do you do? Make sure they're listed against each project. And then really important as well is, um, here you can see the, um, I don't know how you pronounce this, Bivouac, Biv Bivouac, I don't know, Ciderworks. What they've done here is put together uh, a really nice explanation of why the project came to be, what the issue was, and what they were trying to do. Uh, and then straight as you go down here, you've got um, a, a real sense of how the, the brand is used, a real sense of the packaging design, uh, the color scheme, key messages, how else was it used. You know, when, you, when you're showing off the logo, show it in as many uh, contextual ways as you can. Uh, obviously that fit the brand. They're not, they're not going out and you know showing this on um, you know, skateboards and all that kind of stuff, but they're showing it very much in situ in the kind of context you would expect. So how does it look on a menu? How does it look on um, the floor design, the wall design? Um, and because this is kind of an adventure stroke drinks brand, uh, there's a bit of uh, extra there to show you how it goes beyond the restaurant uh, and beyond the drink itself. So really, really well put together um, example of a portfolio piece. 
What they've done down the bottom here, which a lot of designers put to the top, but I think it's more secondary, is they've shown how to explain the, the color schemes, the, the orange, the gold, the blue, um, the brand artifacts, so how else is it used. Uh, that's a really nice way to, to do that. Uh, and I always think it's a little bit more secondary because you want to show the impact of the brand first and then go into some of the explanation a little bit further down the page. So again, more great pictures. Um, you know, some people would possibly say there's, a, there's too many here. Uh, I think this is just about right because there's a lot of ways this brand has been used and you want to show them all off as much as possible. So we've looked at the home page, we've looked at a portfolio piece, and here you can see a real nice menu system, just very, very simple, work, services, culture and contact us. Now for me, I think culture is really important. If a company is going to work with you, what are they going to get? How are you going to react to them? How are they going to react to you? So what Farm have done here is shown behind the scenes of, um, they've got some office shots, kind of flick through these quickly. Um, pictures of the team, how they work together. Uh, yeah, the fact is kind of a, it's a nice size studio they're not a huge empire they have fun they've got a dog you know it just looks like a nice kind of size studio the kind of you'd want to go and either meet them if you're in LA or close by uh, or you know even if you're working remotely that this is a solid team that's going to get the work done for you so uh, then an explanation about the name when they were founded again this is more secondary stuff it's not the stuff you put right at the start people don't necessarily care straight away how long you've been running for but if they, if they are trusting you with a large budget, they want to know that you've been around a while. So make sure you do put in there somewhere that you have been around, what you've done, where you're based. Uh, and then what Farm have done here is they've put their core values. I think this only works if you really mean what you say. Uh, and, and studying this company and seeing them interviewed before, seeing the guys who run it, uh, and, and, and speaking to them over, over Facebook, I know that they are genuine about this thing. So aim higher, collaborate a lot, embrace your uniqueness and seek opportunities. And I guess that runs through the leadership, runs through the staff and everything that they do. So it's really important to put that there because people aren't just, especially if someone's going to be using you for years and years, uh, they want to know that they're going to get on with you, not that you're just going to um, do the work. You're going to actually be fun to work with as well. And then again, the team down here. Now, if you're a freelancer, obviously this is harder to do, but maybe you do collaborate with a few other people and maybe you could feature them on your site, if that makes sense as well, if, if you're working with them on a regular basis. you know. But again, this gets across the personality of the team. Really well shot photos, which is what you'd expect from a design agency. And again, happy faces, smiling faces. And I know it sounds obvious, but people um, are more attracted to work with you if you look like you're enjoying what you do. So the other thing I noticed was um, that they've listed out where they've been recognized and any kind of press releases they may have had. Again, this is just about um, adding more credibility to what you do. Uh, the fact they've been featured in magazines is really important. The fact they've been uh, recognized for the, the quality of what they do, again, is really, really important. A lot of um, that, again, is um, it's not the first thing a client will think of, but it definitely helps in the decision-making process if you've done that. And then at the bottom here, you'll see they've got farm cultivating brands. Now cultivating brands was something that they mentioned right at the start, uh, and it's what they're saying here as well. So if you've got a strap line that you use, make sure that's throughout your portfolio as well, and you mention that. Uh, and then just a quickie, make sure it's easy for people to find you on social media. I just so happen to know that um, Farm have a really good quality YouTube channel as well, Instagram, they're really live down there. I won't go into all that now because we're looking at the portfolio. Uh, and we're looking at your website that contains your portfolio. But hopefully that gives you a load of really good ideas. Go and check them out, farmdesign.net. If you've got any really good examples like this, put them below in the, in the YouTube comments, uh, and I look forward to bringing you more videos like this.